Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is a special Screencast-O-Matic presentation that is basically going to give you the second half of the warm-ups for cycle four. So please listen carefully as these are the questions of the day for the particular lessons that you are completing both in class and or on your own. So here's the question and then comes the corresponding answer. For Monday and Tuesday, what are some important but noteworthy facts about the amendments numbers four through eight, also known as the rights of the accused? In other words, what are some basic rights and principles that are vested to you as a citizen with amendments four through eight? Let's go ahead and look at some of these things right now. So first and foremost, the Fourth Amendment is about no unreasonable searches and or seizures by law enforcement. This is really important when it comes to, of course, personal protection of your property, your home, and yourself. The Fifth Amendment deals with the due process of law, where every single person is guaranteed in this country due process. You cannot be tried for the same crime twice, which is double jeopardy, and you cannot be forced to testify against yourself, which is called self-incrimination. The Sixth Amendment of the Bill of Rights is a right to a fair trial, an impartial jury, and also a speedy trial. Uh, in other words, that there is an, a rate that you have to move at, as far as the legal system is concerned, with hearing your case, and you can't just be thrown in jail for a prolonged period of time. Uh, the Seventh Amendment of the Bill of Rights deals with being guaranteed a trial by jury in civil cases. And the Eighth Amendment deals with no cruel and or unusual punishments, and also no excessive bail. Please realize we're going to be looking more at bail on Thursday and Friday's lesson. The main problem that most people might have, however, with Amendments 4 through 8, is not really knowing about the specific rights that are given to them, A, and then also B, really how to engage with what they can do to exercise their rights. For example, many Americans, when they do deal with law enforcement and or courts, are sometimes not as well versed in the law as they should be or could be and sometimes this leads to improper engagement with law enforcement and or judges and or the courts on a greater scale which of course never really works in your favor so hopefully by this class and by the lesson that comes with this warm-up you'll understand a little bit more about what is expected of you when it comes to knowing your rights even when you are accused let's go to the next lesson for thursday and friday why are the ninth and tenth amendments important to citizens and the greater government so here we go. These are basically the last two amendments to the Bill of Rights section of our amendments portion. <clears throat> the Ninth Amendment to the Constitution states that rights that are not explicitly stated in the Constitution are for the people. The whole main purpose, if you will, of the Ninth Amendment is that the Constitution allows room for extra rights to be protected and upheld, even when they're not explicitly stated in black and white in the Constitution. The Tenth Amendment of the Bill of Rights refers to the fact that any powers not delegated to the federal government belong to the states. And the whole purpose why this particular amendment actually matters is because states now have the right to introduce, question, challenge, or amend rights and provisions. So when we say things like states' rights, states actually have some power and autonomy when it comes to rivaling the federal government on certain principles. Now, a big problem of these amendments is that there's ongoing debates about the legitimacy of future amendments and government practices as they exist right now. So for example, when we look at the Ninth Amendment, there's many Americans who are saying that, you know, they feel like certain other amendments and provisions should be part of the Constitution. And as you're aware, to be part of the Constitution, you have to go through the amendment process. And so many people are quite cynical of some of the other amendments that are in the Constitution, and we'll talk about that later when we get to them. Another big problem with the 10th Amendment specifically is that there's different practices that have been established by states that differ from state to state, but also differ and are sometimes are in conflict between state and the federal government. So in the end, this means that sometimes on certain issues, there's little continuity and much confusion when it comes to enforcing the law and of course on taking action on certain provisions. We're going to be looking specifically at things like healthcare and marijuana when it comes to state versus federal government and who wins and who supersedes the other person in that, in that way. So there you guys have it. Those are the warm-ups and the questions of the day for the particular lessons that I had mentioned there to you. If you need to, you can replay any part of this presentation for help and clarity. Remember to submit your warm-up template by the deadline specified in Google Classroom. Thank you very much for tuning in.